the Jasper County Sheriff's Office is called to Pineland Road on September 30, 2018, after reports that a pedestrian has possibly been struck by a car along that roadway. When authorities arrive, however, they find that the victim, Sanquin Chuck Frazier, wasn't struck by a car at all. Rather, he is lying on the side of the road wearing only his underwear, with a gunshot wound to his chest. When an officer asks the 17-year-old, who did this to you? Frazier replies, Hustle man. The statement is captured on the officer's body-worn camera, but that is nearly all the information Frazier is able to provide. He dies en route to the hospital. This area where the crime scene was located was a very dense forested area. Unfortunately, investigators were unable to locate um, any casing, any projectile. What they had at that time was the information, the lead investigator had the information that when asked by the responding law enforcement officers, what happened, uh, who did this to you? that the victim uh, said very clearly, um, Hustle Man robbed me, Hustle Man shot me. Javaris Hustle Man Williams is well known to law enforcement. His criminal record dates to at least 2010 and includes convictions for assault and battery, possession with intent to distribute cocaine, DUI and failure to stop for a blue light. Authority suspicions about the killer's identity are confirmed after interviewing Frazier's friends and relatives. They say that the morning of the shooting, Frazier rode home from a Jasper nightclub with two other men. One of them was Job Barris Williams, who goes by the nickname, Hustle Man. Those interviews with Frazier's friends and family also suggest a motive for the killing. The night before he was shot and killed on Pineland Road, he had spent that night um, in Estill, South Carolina. There was a yard party at a, a gentleman's home there. There were friends and family of the victim there. From what we understand, it was generally um, an easygoing, fun time. In fact, the victim um, had been playing dice. He won a substantial sum of money, apparently. Uh, and then, as the evening went on, again, we were able to timeline this. Uh, a number of gentlemen from that yard party decided that they would go down to the Club Karma, which is near the South Carolina-Georgia border. They variously traveled back and forth um, from uh, the yard party to Club Karma and then from Club Karma back up to Estill. But most importantly for us, for the state, for the prosecution, is that the victim was in the back of the defendant's car on the way home. Investigators locate the man said to have been with Frazier and Williams in the vehicle that night. He confirms they were together and describes what happened. The witness said he was asleep in the car when he was awakened by a gunshot outside the stopped vehicle. He saw Frazier and Williams outside the vehicle as if in some sort of dispute. As the passenger opened the car door and asked what they were doing, Williams demanded he get back in the vehicle. As the third man shut his car door, he heard a second gunshot. Williams then got back in the car and sped away, leaving Frazier behind. He drove himself and the eyewitness uh, back to a location in Hampton County, a trailer. Uh, at that trailer, he disposed of evidence. In this case, law enforcement had put out a blitz to social media that um, Javaris Williams was wanted for the robbery and murder of Sam Quan Chuck Frazier. He ran in full flight. See, here's the thing. Nobody knew, other than the small law enforcement community, the investigators, that Chuck had named his killer. And I think Hustleman just confidently proceeded on um, and took an attitude of somebody's talking, somebody's snitching, somebody's, you know, cooperating. But what he didn't know was that the most important person who was uh, cooperating was the victim. He thought he'd left him dead. But the most important somebody was Chuck. So. Eight days after the killing, Hustle Man is arrested by U.S. Marshals in a Columbia motel. He is charged with murder, armed robbery, and possession of a weapon during commission of a violent crime. 
Tracy Campbell of the 14th Circuit Solicitor's Office Career Criminal Unit will prosecute him. Investigators subpoena Williams' Facebook page and find useful evidence. They discover he posted a video of himself driving a vehicle the morning of the murder. In it, Frazier is shown asleep in the back seat, and a third man is in the front passenger seat. Investigators discover a slew of messages sent to Williams, telling him he is a wanted man. They also see Williams has viewed news articles about his fugitive status. It all suggests cognizance of wrongdoing. The case is put on a trial docket for April 2020, but the COVID pandemic forces a delay. Williams violates bond terms by failing to show up for a court appearance. He is apprehended again in April 2021 in Brunson, after giving a false ID to a law officer. The trial is again delayed in 2023 when a key witness comes down with COVID. The delays are not helping the state's case. One witness who has moved to the upstate is shot and killed. A second is confined to a wheelchair after two cars force his vehicle off the road in Hampton County. Law enforcement suspects that, even from behind bars, Williams is tampering with the case. He made numerous jail phone calls. We monitored his jail phone calls for precisely the reason of what we found ourselves listening to, which was his attempt to um, intimidate, to threaten, even to potentially try to influence um, the jurors listed on a jury list from May of 2023. In fact, uh, law enforcement opened an investigation into that, and he, he was served additional warrants for um, attempting to influence or intimidate witnesses and jurors. That case is still pending. Williams' trial begins August 12, 2024 in the Jasper County Courthouse. The combination of the victim's dying declaration and the ability to piece together the last 24 hours of his life through the witnesses and again, witnesses who were terrified to testify. Being able to get those witnesses under subpoena, being able to get them into a courthouse safely, get them out of that courthouse safely, um, so that the victim's dying declaration, his last words as to the person who robbed him and shot him and killed him could get in front of a jury. The defense tries to throw Campbell and her investigators a few surprises. What did come as a surprise were the two last minute uh, witnesses who he was going to try and call. Um, essentially, those witnesses were there to provide a third party guilt and an alibi. Uh, the defense had provided no notice as required by the law uh, to, to those witnesses. However, upon direction by the court uh, to proceed, we did. The entire team came together. Um, the intelligence division at the solicitor's office, uh, my investigator on this particular case, um, everyone worked together in those 20 to 30 minutes and prepped ourselves for those two witnesses. Um, and the information that we had allowed us to effectively cross-examine them, for instance, one of the witnesses had a number of comments on his Facebook page that indicated that he wanted to free Hustle Man and um, had tremendous disrespect for the court and for the judge uh, and the process that was going on that week. Then, Williams takes the bold step of testifying in his own defense, and it does not go well. His attorney asked him about um, the nickname and, and the response was given, well, he's a hustler, you know, he's making his money, he's hustling. Um, he was trying to hustle the jury and we put a stop to that. There was a time when I asked him repeatedly a question and the facade dropped. People in the courtroom saw it. The anger and the frustration came across. Um, and I think the person that he was at that moment is the person that Sam Kwan um, last saw. Campbell calls 13 witnesses and cross-examines three defense witnesses over three days of testimony. The General Sessions Court jury convicts Hustleman of all charges. Circuit Court Judge Carmen Mullen sentences him to life in prison. I think that Sam Kwan 
Chuck, as friends and family called him, probably felt very safe um, in, that, in, the, in the company of his friends and family. He did not know Hustle Man. Chuck was nobody, nobody to Hustle Man. He was just another person he was victimizing. Chuck had a relationship with those people at the yard party. Again, his family, his friends. It was <laughs> just more than uh, more than misfortune. I mean, he'd been lucky earlier in the night. He'd won that money, but that money in his pocket was the the driving force behind Hustle Man um, making some easy money, hustling up some easy money. And I and just as I said it during the trial, I believe when he uh, demanded the money from Chuck, and Chuck probably. Um, hesitated and you know you don't hesitate with hustle man and he killed him